Keith McGowan here, the Outboard Dad, here to help you have a better boating experience. Today we're continuing on with our Mercury 2.5 rebuild. So please like, subscribe, send me any comments that you have. If you remember in the last episode, we got the crankshaft in. And now what we need to do is we need to get our pistons all together. We need to get all of our rings lined up. We're going to put the rings in the cylinders and check with our feeler gauge to be sure that all of them have a very, very close gap. It can be off a couple thousandths here and there, but I don't want one at 25 and one at 18, right? I want to make sure I get them all close and together. So let's start getting the boxes open for the new shiny parts, which is the fun part, and also getting some of the old ones together. What we're going to do and what's going to take some time is these needle bearings we're going to change. So they're all going to fall out when we pull the wrist pins out. Of course, you have to hammer it a little bit, so it's easy for them to scatter. We could reuse them if there was nothing wrong with them. We're going to test a little bit the old ones to see if there's any play in them. Maybe that was contributing to some of the knocking noise. But we're going to go ahead and put the new ones in. We do have new bolts for the connecting rods. We're going to get our micrometer out. We're going to measure the old ones and the new ones to compare. We got the new ones, so we're going to use them. But I like to save the old parts. You never know when you're working on a motor and something's missing or you drop it. Not that I've ever done that before and lose parts and then you got some some spare ones kicking around so let's start with the ring sets we're going to open up the boxes i'm going to label them top middle bottom for the port side and top middle bottom for the starboard side and we'll start taking the old pistons off it's going to get a little bit dirty we want to keep it clean so i'm going to put another rag down here for removing and then i'll take that rag out of the way when we put the new uh, rods in and make sure everything's nice and clean We've got each set of rings here. I'm going to wipe off the ones that we were test fitting with before because they might have got a little grit on them. We want to make sure there's no grit in there. But we're just going to do our ring gap tests now. Let's see where we're at. So I'm at 19 thousandths on this one. 21 thousandths on that ring. 19 thousandths on that one. So we're going to continue on and just continue to check each ring set to make sure we're within that 18 to 25 thousandths that we talked about. So let's get that done and then we'll start switching our pistons over on our connecting rods and adding our new needle bearings. So I went through one by one each cylinder, all the port side, all of the starboard side, and checked every single ring set. Now, one ring set I would put in would beat 18 thousandths. I put it in another hole, it would be 19, so I'd keep it in that hole. Another ring set I put in this hole, it would be 24 thousandths. Put it in another hole and it would be 22 thousandths. So I mix and match so that, and I labeled which, which, whether it was top, middle, or bottom, and mixed and matched those rings up so that everything was right around that 19 to 21 thousandths range. Even if I had two piston rings, one was at 21, the other one was at 19. So the smallest I had was 19, and the largest was 22. But that 22 was with a 19 ring, if you know what I mean. So that this way I will have as even as compression as I can. All of these ring sets are never gonna be 100% perfect out of the box. We know we have a range from 18 to 25 thousandths and we're good. And there's also gonna be some wear. Right? As soon as we start wearing these rings in the first couple hours of runtime, we're going to lose a little bit. They're going to break in a little bit. We're going to seat those rings into the cylinder walls, and those ring gaps are all going to open up just slightly. So next, what we're going to do is remove our circlips, our piston wrist pin clips from our old piston, and we're going to go ahead and install our new piston. So we're going to get in here with a little screwdriver sometimes two screwdrivers does it but it looks like one will get it with this one depending on where it's at and that one's gone uh we don't we don't reuse them anyway so it's not a problem with the one clip removed i have a craftsman socket and a beat up set here that i've used as you can see many many times to remove sometimes you can put this on a block of wood most times if you get it started and it should go pretty easily. You can go ahead and knock that out. Now I take my time. 
I do have my tape labeled so I know which side the rod was on the top of the cylinder so that when I remove this, okay, so I'm going to have all of my little wrist pins that are going to fall out. And I have two spacer washers that go on either side. We want to retain those needles and we're going to get them inside here. So I'm going to show you how we're going to do that with a little bit of our white lithium. Uh, and I'm going to save these needles. I have another little Ziploc bag here. I'm going to save them just in case I lose one through the process. I have another one. Should be all the same size. The wrist pin I will look at closely. I don't feel any ridges on it. So that may be something I'll hold on to in, in case I'm doing an a inexpensive rebuild for somebody and save. So now, since I have my rod labeled, I know this is my port top cylinder. So I'm going to pick my port piston and get the needle bearing set up for it. And then I'll dump this out. And it looks like it comes with new washers as well. So we'll go ahead and put the old washers in the little baggie. So now we'll get a little bit of our famous grease in here. I am going to take my gloves off because this will be easier without the gloves because this is what's going to hold our needle bearings. I put it on a little bit thick, especially where I start. And you just kind of grab a couple of them and push them up against the side. It should be kind of a tight fit for the last one to go in. So I can show you here how they're all lined up now. And now we can line up our piston properly. So we wanna be careful to make sure that my top of my motor, so my rod goes this way, cause this is the bottom of my motor. And I go to my exhaust port, which has to go down. So it says exhaust on the top of the piston and that's pointing down to my exhaust. And so this is the way it's going to go in. Now I have to take a little more of my lube and put the washers on. It'll lubricate this up really good. And what I usually do is I'll get this started, get some inside here, and I'll just get this started first. Then I'll double check. My exhaust needs to be down. And that's the top of the block. So I go in this way. So now what I want to try and do is I want to try and center this as much as I can. Sometimes the washers try to push themselves out, so you have to kind of hold it. And get it centered and then line it up. And it drops right in. So I don't see any needles inside here. So now I can just line up my washer on this side is a little bit off Let's do the rest of the way. There it goes. So as you can see, you don't have to beat it. You don't have to hammer it at all. I'll put my gloves back on now to put these circlips in. They're a little tricky to get these lined up. Get my little needle nose pliers. So what I like to do is you don't want to mangle these up. You want to put them in carefully at one time. The There is a little edge here that has a little notch on the piston so what i try to do is i try to get it in this way so that my pliers go in that notch so i was able to give it a little twist when i pushed it down in there kind of pop it into place here so you can see now the wrist pin clip is in its groove the whole way around. Now we'll get the other side in. Seems to work better with the pliers to give it a little twist. Kind of close it up while I'm rotating it. Pops into place. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take some of our famous grease here I'm gonna get some of it in the ring grooves. I'm not worried about filling them all. I just wanna have some lube in there. So this is our port top. Here's our exhaust. Here is our top set of rings that we label. Now there is a pin on our piston here where our rings have a groove that line up with that pin. So if you look at the end of the ring, 
it has a concave on each side. So what I like to do is find it. Let's find the bottom one first, because now I have grease in it. Now where is that bottom one? There it is. And then I like to use, a lot of guys like to put them on by hand. Certainly nothing wrong with that, but nice cheap little set. Ring expander. I have my concave going up because my pin is at the top of that ring. And I'm gonna spread this out just enough to get it over the top of the piston and in that second groove and line up with that pin. So again, the pin is on the top of the piston so I have my concave going downward. And this is just a little V set in here just to grab the ring. And now you can see when that closes up, I can't squeeze it that hard, but when that closes up, it lines up on that pin and closes off nicely. So now this one's ready to go in. I'm gonna put a little more on the sides and on the rings. Make sure it's all well lubricated all the way around. And we'll show you how the first piston goes in and then you'll know how the rest of them go in. We're gonna rotate that crankshaft each time. We do have a new set of bearings for the rod end cap and bolts for the rod end cap. And we're gonna measure those too. So as you can see, my piston ring compressor has been around for a hundred years. I do keep it in a bag so that it doesn't get dusty, dirty, or gritty. So the piston ring compressor, it's just a band of metal, that's all it is. It does have a few points on it at the bottom. Okay, so if you look at there, you see the little indentation. So that's what we want against our block because that's where it's going to hold so that it holds our rings in and we can enter the cylinder. So we just push the button here and it opens up. Gonna add a little lube. Before I put my ring compressor tool on, I wanna be sure that my rings are lined up on their pins. So I'm gonna put these, make sure they're lined up. Then I'm gonna go ahead and open this up a little more. Put this over it, just to cover the rings. We don't need to go too much further, just up to the wrist pin. And now this tool is going to clamp it down, and all we're doing is squeezing those rings. Now we don't want it crazy tight because we also have to slide it in. So if you remember, we put a little chamfer, right? This one is top. Yep, so this is port top. So let's double check before we start putting these in. So when I look at my block, here's the bottom. So if I stood it up, my left side is my port side, right? L-E-F-T, P-O-R-T, same number of letters. And my right side is my starboard side, different number of letters. Take our cap off. We can take our tape off now with our label on it. And we're gonna go ahead and remove our end cap, our uh, rod cap. But I'm gonna keep it in the same orientation it needs to go back in the motor because I don't want to flip this around. I want it to stay in the same. So my exhaust is down, that's correct. So it goes in this way and I'm gonna put this aside right here with its associated bearing. Now we do have a new bearing. So, so all we're gonna do is be sure that we don't scratch our cylinder when we're putting this in. Also gonna put a little lube on here and a little lube on the threads. I want my bolts to thread down nice and easy to get a good torque because we have to check the torque specs on this. So we go ahead and put this in here, double checking. The exhaust is down. We want to make sure we line up our crankshaft here. Then we're going to take a, a rubber mallet or the back of the hammer here and just tap it in. So it goes all the way through nice and easy. So we have our rod here and we're going to push the piston up. It's going to be a little tight because the rings are, are tight on there. And we're going to get it right up against our journal. 
So the new bearing cages are different. The old ones have pl are plastic. These are steel caged bearings. So we're gonna lube these up really well. And what we're gonna do is slip the first one in and slide it under so it's on the connecting rod. Second one we're gonna put on top. Rod end cap. We're gonna remove the bolts, put them aside. We'll measure them later and see where we're at. Making sure I keep this in its same orientation. Gonna remove the old bearing out of it. Make sure we put generous lube on here and put the end cap on. Now tightening these can be a little tricky. There is a tool that they make for it. If you like, if you like to spend money on tools. Now this is an eight millimeter 12 point socket. If you remember, that's what we use to remove it. So I'm gonna now put my cheater glasses on. I'm gonna get very picky about how this connects. There's a smooth side here that has to line up. And I'm gonna get this side just snug. And then I'm gonna look at the other side to make sure it's lined up and just get that snug. I'm not gonna crank down on this yet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to give it a little bit of tightness, snug it up, because we have to be sure this lines up properly. So old trick we're gonna do, I'm gonna take my cheater glasses and a little pencil, and on this flat side, I'm gonna rub my pencil up and down. It makes a nice straight line up and down all the way and it doesn't leave any filings. If, if it goes and it stops and it catches and then goes, then it's no good. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And now I know I'm lined up properly. Next thing I wanna do is rotate my crankshaft. Make sure there is no binding. Now I have to do this carefully. I'm not, there's nothing holding the crankshaft down. So I wanna make sure I'm not popping it up when I do this. So I wanna rotate it and make sure there's nothing binding and everything moves nice and smoothly. It's a simple, straightforward way that we go through replacing each piston, each connecting rod, each needle bearing set, as well as each wrist pin bearing set and the, the uh, crankshaft bearings that we did originally. So we wanna make sure everything's lubricated all the time. As, as you notice, everything was labeled. So I can now chuck these labels one by one We'll do our middle port piston, the next one, then we'll flip the block over. Each time we put a new piston in with the rod, we're gonna rotate it, make sure everything moves slowly. So let's get the rest of these pistons in, and then we'll continue on with this project. So before I forget, we're now gonna look at our torque specifications. Let's see, engine torque specifications. Over here, connecting rod bolt. We'll go with the 15 inch pounds then 30 foot pounds and then a quarter turn. So that's why these rod cap bolts need to be replaced because they get stretched out pretty good. So I just have old school torque wrench I've had for many years. It says go to 15 inch pounds first and then a quarter turn. And now they're nice and tight. Now we know how to install a piston, connecting rod, connecting rod bearings, wrist pin bearings, our um, uh, crankshaft bearings we have new crankshaft bearings in there and we have a torque to specification so now we just have to do each of the rest of them change out the pistons put the rings on all the needle bearings pop it in torque down for the other five pistons and then we're ready for the next step so please like subscribe send me any comments that you have and we'll hope to see you out on the water